It's the final day of campaigning for the general election in the United Kingdom, a poll that's tipped to end 14 years of conservative rule. Top issues for voters include the cost of living, health, immigration and climate. The Labour Party, led by Keir Starmer, could gain as many as 70% of seats in the House of Commons, though Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is insisting he's fighting for every vote till the last moment of the campaign. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson has even made a last-ditch effort to rally support for the Tory party and the man who helped turf him out of office. Is it not therefore the height of insanity, if these polls are right, that we are about to give Labour a supermajority, which they will use to make us nothing but the punk of Brussels, <laughs> taking EU law by dictation with no say on how that law is made, paying into Brussels budgets again. You watch, you watch. Now Boris is right to say now is the time for all Conservatives to come together to deny Labour that supermajority that Keir Starmer craves. We have 48 hours to save Britain from the danger of a Labour government. Well, for more analysis, we can bring in Tim Bale, a professor of politics at Queen Mary University in London. Thank you very much for joining us on France 24. Why then is it that the Conservatives are so unpopular? Well, the fundamentals are not good for them. The economy is sluggish, uh, even flatlining at times. Uh, the National Health Service and other public services are really in crisis, crumbling, if you like. Uh, the Conservatives have also failed to demonstrate that Brexit has had many benefits for the UK. And of course, they've elected two or three leaders who are uh, pretty unpopular with the public. If you put all those two, three things together, then uh, to be honest, it's not surprising they're in a lot of trouble. And earlier we heard some pretty shocking statistics about the state of uh people's everyday lives and uh, people even suffering from malnutrition uh, in the UK. Can you give us a sense of, of what it's really like there? Well, I mean, I wouldn't want people to go away with the idea that uh, everybody in the UK is somehow suffering from malnutrition. But it is certainly the case that poverty, particularly among um, households with young children, has risen over the course of the last 14 years. Uh, the number of food banks, for example, has increased dramatically. Uh, so poverty is a real problem in this country. Uh, it's not something, interestingly, that has been discussed much at this election, but it is something that is going to be a challenge for the next government. And uh, Labour, meanwhile, has seemed to be lying low throughout the com campaign on potentially polarising issues like transgender rights, uh, Britain's colonial past. Uh, it's even treading carefully on immigration. Uh, what do you make of this then? Well, it's no surprise, really, because those issues are far from important to most voters. Clearly, um, on either side of those particular debates, uh, you know, they are uh, quite crucial. Uh, but as far as most voters are concerned, it's the so-called bread and butter issues that really matter. So it's the economy, the cost of living, the National Health Service. Uh, immigration does matter to uh, a fair number of voters, but most of those voters who are very concerned with that are the voters who are uh, either sticking with the Conservatives or going to reform. For Labour voters, although immigration is not unimportant, it's not a particularly important issue. Uh, and it's also one, obviously, that is very, very difficult for any party in government to solve. So it's not entirely surprising that Labour's not saying very much about it. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, when it gets into government, uh, is able to do something uh, that the Conservatives haven't been able to do. In other words, stop the boats coming across the channel. But it will be a very, very difficult thing for any government to do in the UK. Right. Well, Brexit is also an issue that's been largely absent from the campaign, even though it was a big one uh, in previous uh, years. Why, why is that? Why are we not hearing so much about it this time round? Well, for two reasons. On the Conservative side, they really haven't got very much to crow about. It's very difficult to demonstrate that Brexit has actually brought the benefits that some people suggested that it would uh, back in 2016 or when we left in 2020. Certainly, it hasn't enabled us to take back control of our borders in the sense of reducing immigration. On the Labour side, uh, they are still worried, understandably, that some of the voters that they have managed to claw back from the Conservatives from 2019 are still 
concerned about immigration and therefore uh, uh, therefore Brexit uh, is an issue which uh, you know they don't want to talk about lest those voters decide that actually uh, they still care about it and go back to the Conservatives or perhaps to reform. So both parties in some uh, senses have got uh, a motive for maintaining what some people see as a conspiracy of silence over Brexit. You mentioned the Reform UK party earlier. D does that party have a, a real chance of, of getting some seats? Well, some seats, I think, is the operative phrase. Uh, we have a first-past-the-post system in this country. Uh, reform can really touch between 15 and 20 percent and still only get a handful of seats uh, in Parliament. It looks as if actually... Uh, their polling numbers have gone down a little bit. So one would expect them to poll maybe just over 10 percent, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. But that will still only give them, uh, you know, one, two, three, four seats in Parliament. Uh, that's what's expected. I mean, the uh, first past the post system can sometimes throw up some interesting local results. I would have thought that Nigel Farage, the leader of reform, will actually win the seat he's going for in Clacton. But the question is, will he bring many more people into Parliament with him? I doubt that. OK, and if polls, if the, these polls are correct and uh, the Conservative Party does suffer a humiliating defeat, where does that leave them for the future? Well, it leaves them with a lot of hard thinking to do. Uh, it will probably take them into a leadership contest in the next few months, at which point they will have to decide which direction they go in. Either they uh, stick with the kind of populist radical right direction they've been going in for some time in order to try and uh, counter reform and Nigel Farage, or they decide that, in fact, uh, elections, generally speaking, are won in the centre of British politics and elect a more moderate uh, so-called One Nation Tory. So really, it's the it's the leadership contest after the election that we should be watching uh, if we want to see what the future direction of the party will be. OK, indeed. Thank you very much, Tim Bale, Professor of Politics at Queen Mary University. Thank you very much.